And what is it that, uh, that uh, we want to show here today? Uh, so myself and Thomas, we're the co-founders of a company called Ambient. And what we do is we develop a communication technology that captures neurological information from the brain and translates it into speech. Uh, now we're developing that for severe disabled people who, due to disease or injury, have lost that ability. Um, so essentially, we got our start out of the University of Illinois. You're truly um, enabling a whole new life for a lot of people. How, how many people are we actually talking about, you know, yeah. across the United States? Yeah, there's approximately three million people in the United States uh, right now that live with severe limited or no form of communication. This is obviously a very uh, 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 tragic story, you know, and, and obviously your technology will make a big difference here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so current technologies that exist are similar to um, like a speak and spell. So they're a tablet device that you press a button and a word or a phrase comes out. But for people like Travis, um, they, can't, they don't have the physical dexterity in order to press those buttons and therefore they can't communicate. So that's where our solution comes in. So what we do is when a person has an intent to communicate, the brain sends an electrical signal down to the larynx. Our device, the audio, captures that and using Texas Instruments microcontroller, we're able to acquire and process that signal and turn those commands into motor controls to move a wheelchair. It looks like uh, Tom has already uh, started to, to think about where he wants to go with the wheelchair. Yes. Can we take a close-up shot at the, at the computer screen maybe yeah. so we actually can show how when, when Tom is thinking there's actually signals, you know, I don't know if you're able to see this, but I saw it yesterday, and, and basically whenever Tom thinks, you know, left, right, forward, back, you'll see a different signal coming on uh, to the computer. And today we're using a computer, but really this could run on the MSP430, uh, but we're using a computer today for the demonstration purpose of the signals coming in. It might be hard, hard to see out there, but it's like watching an oscilloscope, but every time he's thinking about what he wants to do, you see that. And, and maybe, Michael, we need to uh, talk a little bit about, um, you know, it's not that you can read people's minds, right? Correct. Correct. What is it that you do? I mean, how, yes. how, what, what's the difference between reading people's mind and, and yes. what you do? So, Tom, if you were to talk right now... If you... So now when I talk, you can see that uh, oh, yeah. we can detect the electrical signals uh, stimulating my, my throat muscles. Now, I can give uh, these same signals without actually speaking. Very good. Yeah, let's see, let's see if these guys are happy. Outstanding. So, Michael, uh, let's talk a little bit about the implementation itself. So, you're yes. running on an MSP430 today. Yes. Uh, that's enough horsepower to do this, so that's a really ultra-low power environment. That's a low power environment. And that, that could also be enough horsepower to enable Travis to, to speak with his mom, at least say yes, no, yes. those kind of things. So, yes. that would be enough, and he could carry that with him all the time? Yes. Okay. Yeah, in terms of applications, um, so this was just one of the applications that our technology enables. Basically, as soon as you have these signals and you can turn them into speech, you can turn them into commands to have them do all kinds of things. Um, so, what we've currently done, um, We've developed experimentally the ability to capture these signals and also produce continuous speech with about 70% accuracy. So that's something that we'll be uh, demoing relatively soon. Okay. And so for future applications, um, what we're talking about doing for the implementation of this is using our device um, to replace a cell phone handset. So you can imagine a completely voiceless cell phone communication. Uh, so you wouldn't need to speak or hear other people speak in order for them to use their cell phone. We see this as a whole new opportunity to get into signal processing of biological signals and neural signal processing. Um, we've gotten a number of researchers involved in the, in the ECE department and the neurology department, the biology department, looking at statistical estimation problems. And it's just a real rich environment to do research and to encourage students to work on problems that are not only exciting but also can make a real difference.